Gold Silver Company presents The Silver Theater. Starring Preston Foster and Ann Southern in And the Farmer's Son. Brought to you this week in behalf of 1847 Rogers Brothers, America's finest silver plate. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is the director of Silver Theater, Preston Foster. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really excited about this Sunday's play in Silver Theater for two reasons. First, because our guest is the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer star, Ann Southern. And secondly, it gives me the opportunity of playing a swell part opposite her. The play which Ann and I will do is And the Farmer's Son by Bill Hampton, in which Ann plays Madge and I play Tom Martin. Now here's where Henry Charles takes over. <laughs> Now the house lights dim and the silver theater curtain rises on the first act of And the Farmer's Son, starring Ann Southern as Madge and Preston Foster as Tom Martin, Jr. When Madge Hilton gave up her secretarial job to become a traveling saleswoman for the Suburban Products Company, it made her fiancé, Wallace Kane, very unhappy. For weeks, Wallace bombarded Madge with wires and letters urging her to give up her traveling job, but with no luck. On the night our story begins, Wallace has arrived in Granville, Missouri, hoping to persuade Madge to return to Chicago with him. They're in the lobby of the small town hotel. Really, Madge, I, I, I can't understand your attitude. Why should you want to travel around the country associating with traveling salesmen? Well, maybe I like their story. What? Anyway, what's wrong with traveling salesmen? Well, I'll, uh... Explain that to you when we're married. You mean there's more to the story than just bees and flowers? Yes, yeah, now, 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 you see, you see? You've only been traveling six weeks and you're already becoming vulgar. Who's becoming vulgar? Well, now, Madge, don't get angry. I didn't actually mean that you were becoming vulgar. That's what I, you said. Well, I, I meant that... Well, this isn't the sort of life for a girl who's going to become Mrs. Wallace Kane. Then maybe you'd better find some other girl to become Mrs. Wallace Kane. Some girl who's good enough for you. Oh, well, you're, you're, you're good enough for me. Well, thanks. With this manpower shortage, it's nice to have a reference. <laughs> That's fine. Now you're being sarcastic. Oh, don't you realize that I'm only thinking of you, Madge? I'm trying to protect you. Protect me from what? Why, uh, these traveling salesmen. Oh, Wallace, who do you think I am? The farmer's daughter. Now, look, Wallace, I'm a big girl yes, now. Yes, and just like every other big girl, you think you're perfectly capable of handling any situation which may arise. Huh. You need a man to protect you. And you're the man, of course. Well, uh, of course. Uh-huh. Tell me, Wallace, why is it that every man in the world is willing to protect a girl against every man in the world except himself? I, I don't know what you mean. Well, I didn't think you would. What? Oh, forget it. Let's talk about something else and give our tempers a rest. I'm sorry, Madge, but I cannot permit you to change the subject until you have agreed to give up your job and return to Chicago with me. You can't permit me to change the subject. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Kane. Where did you get the idea that you can talk to me like that? Well, after all, I'm the man you're going to marry. Maybe you're not. Well, what do you mean? Exactly what I said. Maybe you're not the man I'm going to marry. I knew it. I knew that while you were gallivanting around the countryside that some slick traveling man would put ideas into your head. Believe it or not, this is my own idea. Good night, Wallace. I'm going to my room. Well, you, you, you won't get any sleep. I'll stand outside your door and I'll yell at you until you agree to return to Chicago. Do you mean that? Yes, I certainly do. Then in that case, I think I'll check out of the hotel and drive on to the next town. A storm of cloudburst proportions is now raging around Granville. Weather Bureau has just issued a warning to all valley dwellers to take necessary safety precautions against flash floods. Oh, great. Yeah, turning to less ominous news. Mr. and Mrs. James B. Lucas are proudly announcing the birth of a bouncing bull calf. Probably their first. Uh, congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Jimmy. The uh, sons and daughters of Follow Me will hold a regular Monday meeting next Thursday in the Art Fellows Hall. Mrs. Branch Clammer will sing. That ought to be quite a clam bake. Uh, you can count on that, ma'am. <laughs> there will also be entertainment. Uh, yeah, what is it, Joe? Huh? 
Oh, say, folks, here's some real news. Uh, Joe Cohen just walked in with a bullet right off the party line. An escaped convict is roaming around about eight miles west of Granville uh, near the Tom Martin farm. This man is armed and dangerous. If you see a suspicious character roaming in that vicinity, report immediately. <laughs> Doesn't sound as though it's going to start. Oh. Did I frighten you? Well, what do you think? I think I did. I'm sorry. Oh, it wasn't your fault. I've been getting quite a build-up on the car radio, cloud bursts and escaped convicts. Do you have any other forms of amusement around here? Well, we uh, go fishing in the summer. What do you do in the winter? Uh, swap lies about the fish that got away in the summer. <laughs> I don't think it's going to start. Look, why don't you lock your car and come with me? We'll phone the garage in Granville and ask them to send a coal car out to get you. Well, where will we find a phone? Well, my folks' place is right over the hill. Well? Well, lead me to that phone. Just a second while I turn on the light. I thought your family lived here. Well, they do. Well, uh... Where are they? They probably drove into Granville to see the show. Oh! Now what? Your clothes! You're the escaped convict I heard about on the radio. Oh, I hate to disappoint you, but I'm the guy who reported the escaped convict. You're not the convict? Look, my name is Tom Martin, Jr. Oh. My father is Tom Martin, Sr. Yes. And this is the Tom Martin farm. Oh. Oh. Then you must be Tom. Yeah. <laughs> now, your friend, the convict, happened to sneak up on me, put a gun in my ribs, and offered to change clothes with me. Oh, well, perhaps I'd better introduce myself, Mr. Martin. I'm Madge Hilton. Well, Madge, now that I can see you, this is an even greater pleasure than I expected. Well, you didn't pick up that line around here. Now, who said I did? Then you are the convict. No, I told you who I am. I didn't say that I lived here. I said my folks did. I've been working in Kansas City for the last couple of years... I just came home on my pre-induction furlough. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Because you kept interrupting. You talk as much as a traveling salesman. Well, as a matter of fact, I am a traveling saleswoman. You're a what? A traveling saleswoman. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so funny about my being a traveling saleswoman? <laughs> Nothing, not a thing, only... <laughs> only what? <laughs> I'm the farmer's son. <laughs> Where's the phone? Right over there on the wall. Now turn the crank. Tell the operator you want Jim Black's garage. Uh, what number did you want, please? Jim Black's garage, please. Uh, sorry, Mrs. Martin. Jim closed up the garage. He went to the show. Oh, darn. Say, say, you're not Mrs. Martin. Well, who said I was? Uh, will you please get me Mr. Wallace Kane at the Granville Arms Hotel? I ought not to. You've been so uppity. You want me to report you? Keep your shot now, lady. I'm getting as fast as I can. <laughs> Hello. Wallace. Oh. This is Madge. Well, well, so you came to your senses, did you? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> Good. You'll find that I know how to be a generous winner, Madge. Wallace. Uh, yes, dear. I need some help. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. You know I do anything for you, Madge. What do you want? A tow car. A what? A tow car. My car slid off the road and it won't start. I'm stuck about ten miles out of town. Twelve miles. Twelve miles. Uh, well, uh, where are you phoning from? The Tom Martin Farm. Oh, dear. Oh, it's an awful night, Madge. Um, look, why don't you just ask the people at the farmhouse to put you up for the night, and uh, then I'll come out in the morning with a tow car. In the morning? Yes, certainly. Well, farmers are perfectly respectable people. You'll be safe enough. Uh, 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 let me speak to the farmer's wife. He isn't here. Huh? Oh, well, uh, well, let me speak to the farmer. Well, he isn't here either. There's no one here but the farmer's son. Oh, well, <laughs> let me speak to him, then. All right. He wants to speak to you. Go ahead, Wallace. <laughs> Hello there, son. <laughs> I'm Mr. Kane. Miss Hilton, the young lady who was talking with me, would like to spend the night at your farm. Do you think that would be all right with your mother and father, son? I don't know how Ma and Pa will feel about it, mister, but I think it's a great idea. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's... That's, that's what I call real farm hospitality, son. <laughs> oh, and I'm going to enjoy meeting you in the morning. Then you're a bigger dope than I thought you were. I'm a... Hey, wait a minute. Who are you? Just the farmer's little boy. How old are you? Well, I don't read Dick Tracy. Let Hello? me speak with Miss Hilton. Sure. I want to talk to you again. 
Yes, Wallace? Madge, leave that house immediately. Madge, leave it. Go back to your car and wait for me. I'll get a tow car and come right out. You changed your mind about my staying overnight? I certainly have. When I get out there, I'm going to beat that big yokel up within an inch of his life. Well, he's considerably larger than you are, Wallace. Uh, well, uh, naturally, my stooping to fisticuffs wouldn't be dignified. No. No, it'd be practically suicide. <laughs> I, I think I know what you mean. Well, I, I can be big enough to forget the incident. Now, you go back to your car, and I'll be right out. Yes, Wallace. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. I don't think Wallace likes me. You're practically psychic. What'd he say? He's coming out with a tow car and wants me to walk back to the car and wait for him. Well, that seems a little silly, doesn't it? Well, yes and no. You're uh, not afraid of me, are you? Should I be? Well, yes and no. <laughs> Must be Wallace again. You might as well answer it. Yeah. Hello? Hello, Madge. Oh, Madge. I have some terrible news for you. What now? The bridge between Granville and the Martin Farm has been washed away. You'll have to spend the night in your car. No. Lock yourself in the car and you'll have nothing to worry about. Now, I'll be out with the tow car just as soon as they get the bridge repaired. Well, uh, good night, dear. Good night. What's on Wallace's alleged mind now? The bridge between here and Granville was washed out. He can't get here. Then you'll have to spend the night here. I don't think Wallace would approve you. No, I guess he wouldn't. What was that? Front door. Mother and Dad must have gotten through before the bridge went out. Oh, Mom, Dad. Okay, buddy, put him up. Uh oh. Who are you? Ask him. Introduce me, bub. This is the gentleman who traded clothes with me. The convict? Hey, now wait a minute. Don't get excited, lady. I ain't going to hate nobody. What do you want now? Uh, just a place to sleep. Well, stretch out anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you, bub? Then all you'd have to do is sneak up on me and knock me off. That's an idea. Look, you got any closets, bub? Yeah. Well, then let's stop all this dilly-dally, and then you and the dame are going to spend the night in one. One that I can lock. You're going to lock us in a closet to spend the night? Come on, come on. I'll get along with you. Get along. Oh, but, but you don't understand. You can't make Mr. Martin and myself spend the night locked up in a closet. Why not? Oh, we're not married. Oh, you're just good friends, huh? Well, we're not even good friends. We're just acquaintances. Well, you ought to be good friends by morning. Uh, it will give us a chance to get acquainted, Madge. This is the closet. Ah, open the door so I can see. Oh, oh okay. Go on in, lady. I won't. Now, look, lady, I told you I didn't want to hurt nobody. But when it comes to inconveniencing you or risking my neck, you ain't got a chance. Get in there. He means it, Madge. You know I mean it. Well, you're going to have to explain this to Wallace. Oh, that'll be a pleasure. Good night, kiddies. <laughs> hey, what's so funny? <laughs> I'm just wondering if I'll hate myself in the morning. <laughs> It's several hours since the escaped convict surprised Madge and Tom, and they are still locked in their closet prison. Penny, for your thoughts, Madge. They're not worth it. <laughs> you must be thinking of Wallace. <laughs> I was. What's he like? Oh, a successful self-made businessman. Very conservative. Yeah, I gathered that. Oh, he's not as bad as he sounded last night. He just wants me to give up my job and go back to Chicago with him. Do you think he'll approve of our having spent the night together in a closet, even though we were prisoners? He's very jealous. Well, I can't say I blame him. If I had a girl like you, I'd be jealous, too. You mean you don't have a girl? Uh-uh. Why? Are you a woman hater? Why should I be a woman hater? I'm not married. Is that sunlight I can see under the door? Yeah, and I'm getting hungry. How about you? Oh, I could certainly use a cup of coffee. Good. Now, let's see how the service is in this jail. Hey, whatever your name is, how about some breakfast? Breakfast! Coffee! We want breakfast. We want breakfast. It looks like our jailer flew the coop. And left us locked in here to starve to death? Oh, don't worry about that. This door has a weak lock. I hope you're right. I know I'm right. I installed it. There, you see? You could have gotten us out of there any time you wanted. Sure. And the guy with a gun would have put us right back in. Maybe as corpses. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. You don't think of a lot of things. Well, I could say the same for you. Huh? What do you mean? Oh, nothing. 
Don't you ever even hold a girl's hand? Why should I? I'm not afraid of them. Well, you'll never make me believe that. Look, I don't fool around another man's girl. Who said I was another man's girl? Well, who mentioned you? Well, while you think your way out of that one, if you'll excuse me, I'll phone the sheriff. On second thought, I won't phone the sheriff. Why, what's wrong? Well, our convict playmate thoughtfully ripped all the wires out of the phone. Oh. Well, let's get breakfast and walk into town. You'll have to show me where your mother keeps things. You, you mean you can cook? Well, don't tell me you thought I was the helpless type. Well, no, but a traveling saleswoman, it uh, doesn't sound exactly domesticated. Well, why did you think Wallace wanted to marry me? Are you kidding? <laughs> it was because of my omelet. That's the only reason Wallace wanted to marry you? Well, that's the one he mentioned most. <laughs> Don't you think we'd better get started? We've wasted an awful lot of time. We certainly have. Hey, where are you going? To get your breakfast. Oh, that. Have some more coffee, Tom? Thanks. I hate Wallace, even without seeing him. Well, at least you don't have to hate yourself this morning. Well, I was always the paper doll type until now. You think you'd like to switch to a fickle-minded, real-life girl? Well, a good saleswoman could probably talk me into it. You know, paper shortage and everything. <laughs> she probably could, if she thought you were a prospect worth bothering about. Of course, I can't imagine a good saleswoman taking the time to cancel the territory and find Shh. out. What? Listen, sounds like our friend has returned. We better get back in the closet. Why? We might resent it if he caught us out here. And I'd hate to have you lose me now that you've just found me. Come on. Well, uh, how do you think you're going to explain the lock and the dishes on the table? We'll worry about that when we get up to it. Well, start worrying, because I think we're just about up to Man. it. What? Oh, man! Do you hear what I hear? Yeah. What? Shall we go out? No. Why not? Well, how could I explain our being in here so Wall could understand? Woo-hoo! All right! Shh! Well! What are you two doing in that closet? Believe it or not, somebody said there was butter in there. <laughs> uh, but there wasn't. Don't you try to get around me with flippancy, Madge. Oh, now, Wally. Madge, how many times must I tell you not to call me Wally? My name is Wallace, and stop distracting me. You surely realize that your conduct is absolutely disgraceful. You, an engaged woman, indulging in... Oh, well, I hate to think of what you might Then have been... suppose you don't think about it. Now you keep out of this, you... You closet hider, you. <laughs> if you were half a man, I'd beat you. Well, why don't you try it? He won't. The offer's only good for half a man. <laughs> why, Madge, has he turned you against me? Well, from what I could hear, it wouldn't take much turning. Well, who are you? Ask them. Hi, kids. Hello. Hello. <laughs> who, who, who is this person, Madge? He's an escaped convict. Oh. Oh! Well, <laughs> so where's the phone? I'll, I'll report him immediately. Stay where you are. I certainly will not. Now, look, Bub, I'd hate to have to knock you off, but I will if you don't follow orders. You wouldn't like to hear this pop gun go off while it was pointed at you, would you? Why, no. <laughs> well, then step back there and keep your mouth shut. Uh... Is there another closet in this house? Small one, right by the front door. Oh, good. I'll put them in there. And then you kids can go back to your own. What? <laughs> You're going to put them in that closet together? Why not? They spent the night there. They spent the night there? Well, sure. Why should they be lonesome just because I drop in? <laughs> I've never heard of anything so outrageous. Look, I'm tired of jawing with you, and I'll get moving so I can lock you in your closet. But you, you, you can't do that. You can't lock me in a closet by myself and lock the girl I love in another closet with another man. Why not? She ain't in love with you. She's in love with him. She's in love with it. Come on, come on, get moving. Oh, lady, lady, you sure can cook. Well, thank you, Skippy. You know, I hate to keep uh, dropping in on you kids this way, but I can't get away from here. There ain't no trap on the road. So that's why you came back to the house. Well, partly. Partly because I needed a hideout, partly because I was hungry, and partly because I forgot to unlock your closet door. I don't want you kids to get hurt. <laughs> you know, you aren't bad at all, Skippy. Hey. What's the matter? Look out the window. The sheriff. It looks as though they've caught you, Skippy. No, nah, no, nah, not yet they ain't. Now, look. You're going to that door and tell Johnny Law that I ain't here, see? You're wrong about that, Skip. No, I ain't. I told you I don't want to hurt you. 
But I don't want to be picked up either. I'll take a chance on getting hurt. I know that, but will you take a chance on a dame getting hurt? You wouldn't do anything to her. I wouldn't, huh? I'd do anything, go back and stir. Now you get to that door quick and tell that sheriff you ain't seen me or we're all going to be sorry. Well? Okay. I'm coming. Hello, Sheriff. Hello, Tom. What can I do for you? There's an escaped convict loose around here, Tom. You seen any strangers? Can't say that I have. Thanks. If you do see one, holler. I will, Sheriff. So long. So long, Sheriff. Sheriff! Oh, Sheriff! The convict is right here in this house. Help! 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 Madge! Madge, are you hurt? No. But that shot, what happened? I just knocked the sheriff's hat off. Children! What do you want? I'm calling on you to surrender. Well, you really have to come calling on me before I do that. The house is surrounded. You haven't got a chance. I'm not. Then surrender. What do you think I am, a quitter? Stop yelling, you big baby. I didn't hit you. Skippy. Yeah? Listen to me. Ah, save your breath, lady. Save it. I ain't giving up. But you must, Skippy. If you don't give up, you'll never leave this house alive. I'll be better off dead than back in a big house. You might be, but others wouldn't be. This is holiday time, Skippy. If anything were to happen to you now, holidays would never be holidays again for those who love you. Huh? And from now on, all through the years, your loved ones will suffer. Loved ones? Yes. Think of your mother, Skippy. Think of that gray-haired old lady mourning her son. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Think of your wife, faithful gentlewoman. Think of your children, Skippy. Think, Skippy. Think. Stop it. Stop it. You're breaking me heart. <laughs> Here. Here, take the gun. Now, that's sensible, Skippy. Well, I think of all of them people. My poor old mother. My faithful wife. My little kids. I... <laughs> Hey, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've been robbed. Give me back that gun. Oh, no. What's the matter, Skippy? This is what I get for trusting a dame. But, Skippy, your mother, your wife, your family, they're all going to be so happy and... Happy? <laughs> Why, you fast-talking. I was an orphan from birth. <laughs> and I never got stupid enough to marry. And you sold me that bill of goods. Hey, sir! What are you, children? Come in here and get me before I commit another murder. <laughs> What did Wallace say when you told him we were going to be married, Madge? Oh, he wished us all the luck in the world, but I don't think he meant it. <laughs> Are you sure you really want to give up your job and join the wax, Madge? Well, as long as you're going to be in the Army, I might as well be, too. Well, if we ever have any kids, we certainly should have plenty of Army stories to tell them. Uh-huh. And when we run out of those, we can always tell about the traveling saleswoman and the farmer's son. <laughs> Well, Ann, you were certainly swell. You'd get my vote for the girl I'd most like to be locked in the closet with any time. Well, thank you, Fred. You did a rather neat bit of trotting the boards yourself this evening. Oh, thank you for them kind words, Annie. <laughs> Say, I know this question is rather personal, but, uh, Ann, on the level, can you really cook? Why, Press, I'm such a good cook that my shorten and bread is practically cake. <laughs> How about you? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm much better with a knife and fork than I am with a pot and pan. <laughs> you cook it, I'll eat it. There's a man for you all the time. Well, I'd better be going. But first, I want to wish all our friends listening in a very happy New Year. And you too, Fred. Goodbye. All names and designations of persons and organizations used in the dramatic portions of this broadcast are fictional. Silver Theater originates at Columbia Square in Hollywood. <laughs>